You're listening to today's inspirational message on pursuing God with Gene Apple. Here's Gene. It's Sunday fun day at every Eastside campus, and welcome to day number seven of 21 Days of Prayer. You made it through the first week, and I am so honored to be on this journey with you. A study on prayer and the recovery of patients appeared in the prestigious Journal of the American Medical Association a few years back, and the study followed the progress of 393 patients who were in a hospital coronary care unit. Half of the patients were assigned three to seven Christians to pray for them, and the other half did not have people assigned to pray for them. Patients were not told whether or not they were being prayed for, so the results couldn't be attributed to like, you know, an improved attitude or something like that. All the prayers knew were the first names of the patients and their diagnosis. They didn't know them personally, and they were given pertinent updates on their conditions. While the two groups of patients were equally sick when they entered the hospital, patients who were prayed for, get this, had fewer complications during the stay. None of the patients prayed for needed tubes inserted for breathing or feeding compared to 12 in the other group. Only two in the prayer group needed antibiotics compared to nine in the other group. Those prayed for had fewer episodes of congestive heart failure, pneumonia, and cardiac arrest. You see, even scientific study has discovered there is power in talking to God. And this week, we talked about God's divine power. We've talked about how it can lead to prayer abuse for our own personal agendas. And so we've been following the example of the Lord's Prayer that Jesus gave us in Matthew 6 that's filled with components of God-honoring prayer. Now, after the worship, hallowed be your name, submission, your will be done on earth, provision, give us this day our daily bread, confession, components, forgive us our debts, then it's appropriate to have a protection component. Matthew 6, 13, Lord, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Regularly, I pray God put a hedge of protection around my life, around my family, my marriage, my kids, my grandkids, around this church. Protect us from the evil one. Protect us from disunity, from apathy, from destruction within or without. You see, friends, there is a time to pray for protection. There is a time to pray for provision. But we abuse prayer when it's only about us. Now, the last phrase of the Lord's Prayer is for your is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And that's the component of affirmation. Jesus says, you ought to end an affirmation with uh, of my rulership over the world and in your life. Just who's in charge? God's in charge. So say, God, I know everything in this world is yours. So I give you my finances. We give you the child that's breaking our hearts. We, we give you our broken relationship and we give you control of our lives. Friends, this model of a God honoring prayer, I think this is what Jesus was saying. You know, don't just recite this prayer, but use it as an example of the different components that ought to be in your prayers so that you don't get out of balance so that you don't resort to prayer abuse, so that prayer doesn't become nothing more than a shopping list of naive desires. You say, well, Gene, how how do I pray in those moments where I want something so badly I'm about to scream? I mean, what do I do when life has taken me to the limits? How do I pray when life's circumstances have me at a point of desperation where it feels like there's no way out? Friends, we've all been there. And tomorrow, Monday, I want to look at praying at those pressure points. But let me ask you right now, hold out your hand and make two fists, okay? Just squeeze as tight as you can. Come on, really, really squeeze tight. And then slowly relax your, t- your fist, opening your hands to Jesus and remembering he's in control. Inviting his peace and presence to fill your heart and mind today. You can rest in his goodness, his never-ending love for you. You don't have to try to control your circumstances any longer. He's in control. And friends, no matter what circumstances you're facing today, remember his rulership over all the world and in your life. Can I encourage you to put these components of God-honoring prayer into practice using the Lord's Prayer as your guide? I hope you'll spend a few moments today applying what we've discovered this week to go deeper in your prayer life. Let me pray for you before you get started in praying yourself. God, 
You are Father in heaven, and we worship your holy name. We ask for your kingdom to come in our hearts and in our lives on earth as it is in heaven. God, give us today what we need, our daily bread, not just what we want, the luxuries, but what we need, and you know what it is. And forgive us our sins. We need your grace and help us as we receive that grace to forgive those who've sinned against us. God, protect us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. For God, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And we honor you on this Lord's day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Catch you back here tomorrow as we begin week two.